All right, now pay attention, 007, because I'm only going to say this once. This may look like an ordinary academic poster, but you'll see here my name on it. You actually can't see that. Then we get a different camera angle. Which means, of course, that it is superior. We have an introduction section, the graph of my supervisor that you see absolutely everywhere. Motivation section, equations, lots of maths. To be fair, it's actually quite simplistic maths and anybody who knows what they're talking about would sort of see that that's actually very easy. Summary to catch people's eye. References, you can look up what I'm talking about. And, well, it just looks pretty bitching really, doesn't it? One thing that's worth pointing out is that this is a weird size. So this is five feet by three feet, um, which is slightly bigger than A0. It's different from A0, um, which made actually making it in GIMP. I've made this in, in GIMP rather than Photoshop or um, LaTeX. Kind of interesting. I had to create a custom size template. Which is a bit of, why does America do things so strangely? Like these Coke bottles. In the UK, these are 500 mils. And in the UK, it's, focus, in the US here, it's 20 fluid ounces, or flozzers, as I started calling them. But yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm really, really pleased with how it's come out. It looks really professional. Um, it just sort of makes you realise that, yeah, you know, you are doing real science. This is something that is very specialised. You are a, a tiny little increment of human knowledge that you're trying to push. And you're the person that knows, I'm the person that knows the most about this in the world, about this hypothesis. Which is kind of a scary thought. Okay, so now I'm beginning to realise just how big this place is. I just said to Tom that I'd meet him in the student lounge. Didn't know where the student lounge was, so I just thought I'd make it up as I went and find it. I'm not sure that's going to cut it. I found a Tom! I found a Tom! It's alright! Yeah, good. I, just, I had to admit, I just came here. I didn't know where the student lounge was, so I just, I just winged it. <laughs> Where is it? Here. Oh, good! Okay, so it turns out that the student lounge is the most disappointing thing since the Phantom Menace. SHOTS FIRED! SHOTS FIRED! So, we're now going to go to a talk on the other side of... So, I'm, I almost want to call it a campus. You know? Yeah. Like, these huge, uh, huge buildings. We're going to the other side of campus and <laughs> looking at a session on gravity waves. So, that was our first session done. Tom nodded off. Um, <laughs> Second talk and he was gone. So the rest of that session was quite high up in the atmosphere. That was gravity waves and um, gravity waves are a very general topic and we focus on the stratosphere and basically the rest of that talk was on the mesosphere and also a lot on the southern hemisphere. They really like New Zealand, don't they? Mm. We're both going to go to this general... Uh, the special general meeting. Special general, which is completely... N nonsensical. It doesn't mean anything and there's no more information about it than that. But it's the guy who's in charge of the X-Prizes, so it'd be interesting to go to. And I'm going to do some work later. I don't know, what are you going to do this afternoon? See some posters, possibly. Okay. Oh, yes. The, uh, yeah, there's a poster session. I might go to that. Charney Lecture, whatever that is. I have it in my programme, but I can't remember what it's about. Oh, fair enough. So we just popped into the cinema before um, we go over to the session. I'd just like to make it known that one of the films used Comic Sans for its titles and it made me feel slightly sick. It was, yeah, I noticed that it, well. it was... Oh, that must have been done for a bet. That is so bad. So we just got in here for the X-Prizes talk. We were just at the very front of the line, somehow. <laughs> I have no idea how we managed that. Uh, and this place is absolutely huge. Um, it's difficult to get it all in camera, really. But like, that's one side. We're right in the middle. The stage is right there. We've basically got the best seats in the house. We've just noticed there's no UK on this map. Look, in fact there are no islands at all apart from this mysterious Atlante Atlantean kind of structure that's between Africa and India. Look at that. Disgraceful. We're living in a time where, if you think about it, a thousand years ago, the only people who could actually go and explore and fund those explorations were the kings and the queens. You know, a hundred years ago, it was still the governments and the largest corporations. But what makes this the most exciting time ever to be alive as a scientist, as an explorer, as an entrepreneur, is the fact that the ability we have now to do this as small teams, as individuals. So that was interesting. Um, they were launching a new X Prize, which was to do with ocean exploration, uh, automated ocean exploration. And then there was a whole discussion, including some rather awkward grilling of the Shell representative, because it was sponsored by Shell. And I think really quite valid questions are being asked about light change, there it is, um, about why Shell would want to sponsor something which is all about improving, understanding the oceans, if not to improve exploitation of ocean resources. But yeah, we're going to go get some lunch and then um, I think, well, we might be parting ways, I think you might be doing some posters and I might be working. Yeah. So. Right, let's go. City, look at that, skyscrapers. 
So I just did some shopping because jeans in Macy's here were like a third of the price there in the UK. And I'm walking on this bit of greenery which is here for no clear reason. Winter Walks SF apparently. But then my Oxford senses are screaming at me for walking on something that is green. Well, I probably shouldn't be. There's the entrance to Macy's. Good lord. So you might well question why I'm doing touristy stuff in the middle of the conference given that it's already started. Well, before we left we were advised to do about 50-50. So 50% of your time on academic stuff, 50% of the time doing cultural stuff, drinking in the, the area. And that's because, as we found in EGU, if you just do science all the time you just burn out and the stuff that you do later in the week just doesn't um, go in. So you need to take your time out and pace yourself. Especially when you're in a place like this. It's a shame not to. Well, that was an experience. Right, so we just chilled out for a bit. I just did some work. What were you doing, by the way? Not a lot. Okay, Tom was doing not a lot. I was doing a bit of writing up some work. And now we're joining the great student migration to the student mixer, which has promised free alcohol and possibly free food, so it's almost certainly going to be absolutely packed. My Okay, we just mixed. We met, we met some people. Hey! <laughs> this is the difference, right? If I did that in the UK, people would just shy away. I like, I'm from Texas! You guys are all about, like, you know, yeah. being out there. So we successfully mixed, and now we're gonna go off to, like, a games Stairs. showcase. Stairs! Right, yeah, we're gonna go off to this games thing, which is meant to be uh, digital games, board games, and card games. Something like that. But to do with yeah. science and teaching it, and hopefully making friends with some more lovely people. There is but one thing for it. We must descend into the mines of Moria. Okay, so in a statistically highly improbable move, everyone on our table, well, not all the prizes went to people on our table. Look, we won stuff. We won um, two tickets to go to the California Academy of Sciences, was it? Yes. Something, Something like that. that. Something like that. Um, bunch of uh, 3D maps and posters and um, a copy of the game. That was really good. Uh, the the game was the game. actually, the game was um, about biodiversity in the Arctic and it was genuinely really, really good. I've now got a copy so I might have to do a video on that. Oh yeah, uh, definitely should do a video. Get a bunch of PhD students together, we'll do that. That'll be fun. Now we need to go and sort some food out at last. Half of these videos are just us talking about food. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Yeah, I should point out, I had to... Two places Yeah, we're usually going to food. I have to get permission from speakers uh, before videoing their talks. So, uh, yeah, uh, you're not going to see very much science. But a lot of this, so, you know, deal with it. So we just got back in. Um, we had food at the same bar that we ate in yesterday. And yeah, had a really, really nice chat, actually. The two people who sat next to us just come from the conference. And these two lovely Canadian people. Um, they didn't actually catch your names, but if you're, if you're watching, if you, if you had a conversation about uh, an English dude teaching you how to swear in British. For example, apparently uh, bellend is a word that doesn't made it out of the UK just yet. We, I learned to swear a bit in Canadian and uh, one of them actually said about instead of about, which made me very happy. It did get me thinking though, that, um, really the, this conference doesn't feel like a conference in the sense that it's just people submitting abstracts. It's a like a cultural experience, it's like a convention. You go here and you are a scientist and you're surrounded by other scientists and you get to meet people and like you get to talk about really, really niche things that people are researching, like um, the hydrology stuff that uh, the Canadian girl was uh, doing, but also like just being able to be in a bar and talking really quite passionately about physics and how what distinguished Einstein from Feynman from Dirac in terms of their thought processes and you know, the best introductory physics courses. and. It's, it's great. It's, it's like a science convention. It's so awesome. I, I, it's been really, really great so far. But yeah, we've got a relatively uh, chill day uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go to the, uh, hopefully going to go to the Elon Musk talk tomorrow. Um, that we might need tickets for, we're not quite sure. Uh, but then after that, I think we're going to go to the California Academy of Sciences with our free tickets. So, VIP! Now that layer between 10 kilometers and 50 kilometers in altitude is what we call the stratosphere and it accounts for almost the entirety of the remaining mass of the atmosphere. So yeah, let's see if I can remember this all. Um, if you want more back front videos with John and I just talking about stuff, then please comment below. Uh, make sure you go and look at that singing playlist of, of choral music about Christmas. Comment below with which one piece is your favorite. You know, just have a listen to a few on shuffle.